Nora Jackson had been working at the hospital for three years. Of course, the woman didn't think of herself as a medical elite. She was an ordinary nurse in the trauma department. As you may know, there's always a lot of work in trauma, and Nora knew it firsthand. Treating fractures, bruises, and sprains was just the visible part of the iceberg, under which a whole bunch of other, less obvious work was hidden. The management appreciated Nora for her compliant disposition and reliability, which allowed them to exploit the woman for their own purposes. Needless to say, it was Nora who got the night shifts way more often than all the other nurses, and it was also Nora who also filled in for her colleagues when they needed a sick day. If there were anyone else, they would have immediately protested and would have definitely raised the uncomfortable question about getting an increase in pay with the management. But Nora wasn't like that, and therefore she always prioritized helping her patients and only then thought about herself. Her father was a retired Marine, and he was the one who was the most upset about the way Nora was treated at her job. Lester Jackson got seriously wounded during a combat mission in one of the eastern countries. Despite the fact that the doctor did their best and managed to save Lester's leg, he ended up having a limp for the rest of his life. Returning to civilian life wasn't easy for the former Marine, and that was mostly due to the injury he suffered from. Severe disability prevented Lester from getting a normal job, which he desperately needed at that time. If it weren't for his beloved girlfriend, Sophie, the former Marine wouldn't have been able to adapt to civilian life. It was the miniature, beautiful woman who surrounded Lester with the very care that the man never knew, since he was raised at an orphanage. Having held a modest wedding ceremony, Sophie and Lester bought a small house on the outskirts of the city and started living together as a family. At first, the couple faced problems at almost every turn. That was pretty much due to the fact that Lester still couldn't find his place in the sun and changed one job after another. The man's disability significantly limited his choice of occupation and completely excluded any jobs that involved any kind of physical activity. Fortunately, Lester had a knack for appliance repair, which allowed him to open up a small repair shop. Even though Lester worked tirelessly, he didn't charge a lot of money for his services. Soon, the news of the talented and inexpensive repairman spread far beyond the city, which provided the man with a steady stream of customers. About a year after starting his repair business, Lester could afford to buy a pre-owned car, which was their first purchase as a family. It seemed that the life of the young couple was finally getting better, which gave them hope for a happily ever after. And so it was for quite a while, but it all changed when Sophie got pregnant. Lester was on cloud nine and was literally ready to carry his wife in his arms. For the first time in his life, he felt what it meant to be a dad. Unfortunately, their joy was premature. Sophie suffered a miscarriage, and the life of the young couple was now filled with unbearable pain. It took Lester and Sophie a very long time to recover from the painful tragedy. And when they finally did, they decided to try to have another baby. But as the doctors had warned the couple, Sophie wasn't able to carry this pregnancy to term either. The inability to have a baby was one problem that Lester and Sophie were unable to solve. Tired after a series of unsuccessful attempts and failures, the couple decided to adopt a child from an orphanage. Sophie immediately got to implementing their plan, and soon she had already gone through all the kids' personal files. Honey, would you mind adopting a girl? I understand you might have dreamed of having a son, as most men do, but I really want to have a daughter so we could become friends in the future. Sophie asked, hopefully, and showed her husband a photo of a cute baby girl. Of course, I wouldn't mind, my dear. What's the name of this little princess? Lester asked with a smile. Nora, she's only one year old, but she already knows a couple of words. Sophie answered proudly. That evening, the couple made the most fateful decision in their lives. They decided to adopt a baby girl who would quickly become their beloved daughter. They never lied to Nora or hid the fact that they weren't her biological parents. But the little girl didn't see any problem with that and loved her parents with all her heart. 
Unfortunately, Sophie Jackson passed away long before her time, just two days before her 45th birthday. Lester was devastated and found it very hard to get over this tragedy. Nora was already 18 years old at the time, and like any loving daughter, she devoted herself entirely to her father. Since Lester's health problems only worsened with age, Nora decided to go to a nursing school so she'd be able to help her father at home. Lester appreciated his daughter's efforts and was willing to do anything to make sure that she was happy. The former Marine had no doubt in his heart that Nora felt the same way about him. And she did, for the most part. The only thing that bothered Lester was his daughter's personal life. The man was hoping to marry Nora off into a military family. But no matter how hard Lester tried, nothing seemed to be working. When her shift ended, the young woman rushed home to give her father an injection of painkillers. Over time, the injured leg started giving Lester even more trouble. The poor man lost his sleep and even the ability to rest peacefully. And now, having left the hospital, Nora decided to use the underpass, as it was the shortest and quickest way to get home. Needless to say, there was always a special kind of atmosphere in the underpass. Homeless people, street musicians, and street vendors selling all kinds of things made up the vast majority of those who found shelter within this gloomy, dark vault. Nora had been there many times before, so she was well aware that virtually anything could happen in that place. But even Nora was surprised by what she saw in the underpass that day. It all started with three drunk men who attacked a poorly dressed man that simply walked by them. They seemed to be completely oblivious to all the other people in the underpass. The other homeless men were standing a little further away and didn't care to stand up for the man. Frankly, they were simply afraid to get involved in a shady story. The three thugs had already managed to smash the young man's face, which made his unenviable position get worse with every second. Of course, Nora couldn't just ignore such cruelty and thus rushed into the thick of the fight, casting aside all doubts. The smart young nurse decided to trick the thugs and introduced herself as an off-duty police officer. Seeing the angry woman in front of them, the attackers got scared and started backing away slowly. Pretending to be a police officer worked perfectly, which was obvious from the frightened faces of the three brawlers. When the men left, Nora turned to the homeless man who seemed to have frozen by the wall and asked, How are you? Do you need help? The man wiped the blood off his face with the back of his hand and said, Nah, I'm fine. I'm used to this kind of thing. Thanks for your help, though. Nora smiled, then took a clean handkerchief from her purse and gave it to the homeless man. Here, take it. You don't need to thank me. I actually don't have anything to do with the police. What? So you actually lied to those thugs? Then who are you really? The young man asked without hiding his surprise. As my father says, all is fair in a fight. But the truth is, I'm a nurse. I work in the trauma department. The woman answered with a smile. Inadvertently, the young people started chatting. They left the underpass and ended up talking for about an hour. Thus, Nora found out that the young man she saved was Anthony and he was an orphan. At that moment, the woman's heart sank. She couldn't help but feel a wave of sympathy for the young homeless man. Listen, what if I invited you to dinner right now? My father is a great man and I'm, I'm sure he wouldn't mind. The thing is, he'd been dreaming that I would finally get married for quite some time now. So he treats every man he sees with me exceptionally well. Would you mind being my boyfriend? Pretend boyfriend, I mean, for a little bit. Nora suggested suddenly. To say that Anthony was surprised would be a huge understatement. The man had gotten all kinds of proposals in his lifetime, but that was the most shocking one. Anthony's first instinct was to say no, but when he saw the sadness frozen in Nora's eyes, he changed his mind. Okay, let's do it, but only for a little while. The man answered in a trembling voice. Nora smiled back and gave her companion a thumbs up. On their way over to Nora's house, the young people chatted about everything in the world, 
laughing contagiously at each other's jokes. The happy couple couldn't go unnoticed by the passers-by. They seemed like a great couple. The only problem was Anthony's old clothes, which spoiled the overall impression. As they approached Nora's house, the young homeless man tensed up visibly, but his companion immediately smiled at him, which helped the man calm down. But when Anthony saw Lester Jackson at the door, he felt rather uncomfortable. The retired Marine gave his guests the same appraising look, which experienced military men gave the new recruits. Dad, meet Anthony. We're friends. Nora began cautiously. Yes, I can see that you're friends. Okay, come on in. Let's talk about it inside. Lester muttered and limped towards the kitchen. Anthony desperately tried to keep his cool. He looked at Nora and followed the owner of the house into the kitchen. As it turned out later, Lester didn't waste any time and had already made a pretty decent dinner. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. Everything tastes great. Anthony thanked the owner of the house. Lester nodded and muttered something unintelligible about how the guest could use a haircut and would benefit from taking care of his looks. Anthony turned pale but didn't respond to the caustic comment, continuing to pick out his salad instead. Nora could see that her father didn't like Anthony, but deep in her heart, she actually didn't expect him to have a different reaction. The way the young woman saw it, her guest was handling the situation exceptionally well, refraining from any reaction to her father's outbursts. Anthony felt that Lester Jackson hoped to see a very different type of man by her daughter's side, while Anthony didn't have any of the traits that Lester saw as worthy of respect. After dinner, Nora asked Anthony to stay, which surprised the man even more. Well, you're my boyfriend. You can't just immediately leave after dinner, Nora said, smiling. Anthony sighed sadly and shook his head in response. The young man was liking this idea less and less with each passing second, but there was no getting around it at this point, so he accepted the terms of the game. By the end of the evening, Lester finally decided to change his attitude towards the young man and even gave him some old clothes, although he didn't fail to mention that a military uniform would have looked even better on him. Well, Dad, not everyone belongs in the Marine Corps, Nora noted cautiously. Lester frowned and limped off to his room. For some inexplicable reason, he felt that he couldn't trust his daughter's boyfriend and couldn't help but expect him to do something bad. But when morning came, there was nothing missing in the house. All the valuables remained in their places. Of course, Nora and Anthony spent the night in different rooms and behaved very decently. A week flew by, and then another one. Anthony had already adapted to his new life and even tried to help Mr. Jackson with his work in the repair shop. At first, Lester refused the young man's offer to help, but then his heart thought a bit and he even taught the young man a few basics of the repair business. Thus, Anthony learned that the retired Marine needed money to renovate his shop, since all of his competitors had already opened large service centers and he was still huddled in his small back room. Time passed, making its own adjustments to the lives of the heroes of our story. Anthony and Nora no longer felt that they were strangers and inadvertently became a real couple, instead of just pretending to be one. Of course, Lester Jackson had to come to terms with the fact that his daughter chose to be with a homeless man. But on the other hand, Anthony seemed like a rather nice man and Lester realized that if he were to disregard the young man's poverty, he was actually a rather good match for his daughter. The man lived in Lester's house for about a month, but then he suddenly disappeared. It happened so unexpectedly that Nora couldn't even grasp what was going on. Anthony simply left home early in the morning and never returned. Well, I knew that he would eventually do something like that. Apparently, he just couldn't give up his street life. I, too, sometimes want to put on my Marine uniform and go back to the Marine Corps. But then I think about you and realize that I, I can't do it. Lester commented on this situation. Tears welled up in Nora's eyes. The fact was that she'd been feeling nauseous and dizzy for the past two weeks. And last night, Nora took a pregnancy test, and it came back positive. Did you talk to Anthony about it? You must have scared him away. 
Lester sounded irritated. But Nora just shook her head to let her father know that she hadn't shared this news with Anthony yet. A week had passed. Lester seemed to have gotten quite a few more gray hairs, and Nora had to go through some of the hardest times in her life. The young woman simply couldn't find a way out of this situation and realized that she would have to raise the baby on her own. Her colleagues looked at her as if she was crazy, shaking their heads contemptuously. None of them could comprehend how it was even possible. Taking in a homeless man and then having his baby and what happened a little later truly shocked everyone and made them reconsider their outlook on life. It all started with the fact that one summer day, several expensive cars stopped by Lester's house. When Nora came out onto the porch, she was so surprised that she couldn't believe her eyes. Anthony was standing in front of her, only he was dressed in a business suit and holding a huge bouquet of roses. Is that really you? was all that Nora could say. Yes, it's me. Please forgive me for all the pretending and for not telling you the truth sooner. Anthony whispered, lowering his eyes guiltily. Nora looked at the man questioningly, after which he shared his confusing story. Apparently, he wasn't homeless at all, but the son of a multimillionaire, Joshua Baker. Desperate to find a woman who would love him for him and not his money, Anthony decided to dress up as a poor person and go looking for his soulmate out on the street. Of course, the man's plan was naive at best, but that was all he could come up with at the time. Having met Nora, Anthony saw something special in her, something that would eventually change his outlook on life altogether. And even his unnecessary relationship with Lester Jackson didn't seem like enough of a reason to give up on his relationship with Nora. Having told Nora the whole truth, Anthony got down on one knee and asked her to marry him. Lester was standing at some distance from the couple and at the sight of this heartwarming scene, he simply couldn't hold back his tears. A month passed. Remembering the problems the former Marine was facing, Anthony helped his soon-to-be father-in-law open a service center for the repair of household appliances. Having gotten married, Anthony and Nora started living the very life both of them had dreamed of for so many years. Now, to the delight of Lester Jackson, there were no longer any secrets between the young couple, as it was when their relationship had just started out. Well, all that's left for us to do now is to rejoice at the happiness of the heroes of this amazing story and wish them many years of a happy life together.